If you've ever been to a concert or seen somebody play before, you may have wondered how exactly do musicians remember such complex and often long pieces without any sort of references to go by? For example, when Daniel Trifonov, one of the world's leading pianist virtuosos, played the third piano concerto by Sergei Rachmaninoff, he played almost 30,000 notes spanning 45 minutes, all without any musical notation whatsoever. These insane levels of memorization are all possible due to one single powerful system in our brain called procedural memory. We use it as a tool to perform both basic and highly complex movements. For example, we use it to open doors or to like videos on YouTube, but it can also be used to solve a Rubik's Cube in under 4 seconds or to use a computer mouse to make banging trap beats in FL Studio. Procedural memory is special in that it can be performed completely unconsciously. It's the reason you can perform certain actions like, for example, driving a car without really thinking about it and without being able to explain how you did it in the first place. Encoding procedural memories on the surface seems easy. Just repeat any movement over a long enough period of time. But looking deeper, I found through research that this actually occurs in three important stages. For example, when you're learning a short passage on the piano, you'll first be pretty conscious of every movement your fingers take. However, as you repeat the passage, it slowly becomes automated. It's here you should play with the passage in various ways, as doing so will speed up memory formation. After a while, a long-term procedural memory is formed, transcribing the movements into your brain. But you still need to use it actively, as it can degrade just like other forms of memory. But here's the catch. Musicians don't just use one single memory, but multiple memories strung together in a specific sequence. Doing so with one memory triggering the next, sort of like a row of falling dominoes, you can potentially store massive amounts of data. For example, here is the start of Rachmaninoff's G minor prelude. This section is actually comprised of individual procedural memories strung together. Procedural memory is like a strange but powerful biological hard drive, allowing you to, for example, memorise the passwords for all of your accounts by giving each password its own unique procedural memory, typing on a keyboard, with the end of one memory triggering the memory of the next password, and so on. But one important thing to keep in mind though, is that procedural memory can easily fault in high stress situations, like for example, on stage. like in this video of a pianist trying to play at the really prestigious 1986 Tchaikovsky competition. Twelve seconds later. In this case, anxiety causes static between the conscious and unconscious parts of your brain responsible for procedural memories, which creates memory slips or lapses. Intrusive thoughts like, here comes the difficult part, or why are my hands moving like that, can cause interference. While you can rely solely on procedural memory, you should try to combine memory with pre-established knowledge. For example, based on what I've read on various piano forms and based on my own knowledge as a pianist, musicians often combine memory with knowledge of, for example, music theory and of the piece itself to avoid memory slips completely ruining their performances. For instance, here, one of the greatest pianists of the 20th century, Rubinstein, used knowledge of chord changes in a piece by Chopin to play through a section where his memory completely faulted. But 
But you may ask yourself, isn't this just muscle memory? Well, yes, kind of. Procedural memory is often referred to under the name muscle memory. However, in my opinion, this is a bit problematic, as it first suggests that procedural memory occurs in the muscles, which it doesn't. It occurs in the brain. Secondly, muscle memory is also used to describe a completely different phenomenon. For example, when you train a muscle, like a bicep muscle for example, long-term enhancements are produced, which stay even when the muscle is no longer trained and even decreases in size. This leads to an easier time regaining muscle size and strength than it was to first build it. Much like muscle memory, procedural memory is also easily regained after periods of inactivity. This is important because it means if you've built similar levels of muscular endurance and memorization as say Trifonov, it means if you stop playing for a while you'll have an easier time regaining that level again due to both your muscles and your brain remembering the training. Of course, procedural memory isn't a one size fits all solution like flex tape. For example, in mathematics, creativity, conscious thought and procedural memory must be combined. However, like any sort of tool really, in the right situations, procedural memory is truly powerful. By harnessing procedural memory like a musician, you too can memorise 30,000 notes. Be it in the form of musical notation, the numbers of pi, the names of all the muscles in your body or 1000 passwords. Thanks for watching.